be recording this live. Welcome, welcome to this um, live training with myself, Yvonne Halling, and Marie Davies, who's monitoring the Facebook group as well. Um, so thanks for doing that, Marie. I'm just going to um, let's do this here. Okay, so, oops, exit full screen, get back into speaker view. All right, so, great. So if you're joining wherever you are, if you're on the Facebook group, then tell us where you're from. Type into the chat in the Facebook group, tell us where you're from, where you're calling in from. If you're on the Zoom here with me, then uh, let me know in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to open it up and uh, and tell me where you're from. We've got Dan from Oregon in the USA. We've got Julie, we've got Tatiana, we've got Norma, we've got Ofra. Just let's, um, I'm just gonna mute you, darling. Can you, I'm gonna mute you. Right, okay, done it. Okay, cool. Hello from Costa Rica. Hello, Julie. Hello from Costa Rica. Hi there, it's Ofra from Israel. Hello, Ofra, nice to meet you. Great, okay, so we're gonna have a bit of fun tonight. I've got some notes here to help me um, direct this call to make sure that you get the most value from it. The, the title of the training or the call today is called How to Make Your B&B Great Again, or if you haven't got a B&B yet, how to make it great from the start. So first of all, I just wanna welcome you and say Happy New Year, because it is the 1st of January, 2020, and oh my goodness, 2020 is going to be a very, very interesting year. So I usually do this on New Year's Day because I want to set you up for success as best as I can um, for the, the new year that, is, that has begun today. So we're going to take a 30,000 foot view, if you like, of the world and the industry and, and then we'll bring it down to earth for you and how you can personally navigate this exciting and interesting um, year that has begun today. So first of all, we're gonna look, we're gonna talk about the energy of the planet. 2020 is a pivotal year in astrology, in cosmology, whatever you wanna call it. And if you don't believe in astrology, it doesn't matter, you don't have to. I'm gonna tell you what I know and what I, what I follow and how I use that to navigate my life so that I'm always as much as possible as much as one can be going with the flow because you don't want to be swimming upstream you always want to be going with the flow like riding the waves and, and and going with the flow so that your life is easier than if you're struggling and pushing and trying to make things something happen because uh, trust me that doesn't work I've done that <laughs> I've done that a lot in my life um, but in the last few years, I've become very aware of astrology, cosmology, what goes on in, in, with the planets, and I use it to guide me. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of this. I'm not an expert on this. I use several sources for astrology, several people I follow, um, and I've read some stuff on it and, and done a bit of study as well. But I'm not an expert on astrology, but I will tell you that 2020 is going to be very, very interesting. First of all, it's, uh, 2020 is about endings new beginnings and paradigm shifts. It's about clearing out past patterns, past patterns of behavior, clearing out resentments and, and baggage that you may have brought with you so far to the end of 2019. It's time to be honest with yourself and release those to the past and don't take them with you into 2020 because you're gonna, you're gonna need all of your focus and all of your energy to navigate this coming year. 2020 in general is going to be uh, very interesting. Um, and I know there's an American general election we've just had in the UK. We've just had a, a, a general election and we will be leaving the European Union ostensibly, supposedly. Who knows whether we'll leave or not, but that's the plan at the end of January. That's going to be massive for the UK. In the US, there's a presidential election at the end of 2020 and there's going to be an awful lot of energy um, expended and released during that time, as there always is at, at these pivotal moments. But January in particular is a very, very interesting month astrologically because there's an event happening, uh, there's two events that I'll talk to you about, but there's, um, there's an, 
there are two events. There's one event that's, that hasn't happened in 500 years, and there's a, a second event that hasn't happened in over 700 years. So that just shows you how pivotal this is. It's about paradigm shifts. It's about new beginnings. It's about endings. It's about no longer tolerating what we've been tolerating before. And that could mean in terms of our, the amount we waste, the amount that we're polluting, the amount that we are, um, we're, we're still in this dog eat dog mentality where I've got to get my bit, I've got to get my share. That's going to change in 2020 into a, a, a more collaborative, a more um, kind, if you like, a, a more kind way of being. And so I invite you to take, to take notice of that because that's going to be the prevailing wind, if you like. So, um, Okay, let's stay at 30,000 feet, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. The lunar eclipse in Cancer on the 10th, and eclipses uh, show, are all about what's hidden from us, so bringing, bringing out what's hidden. And that's, that really lays the way for this huge event on the uh, 12th of January, which is a, a Saturn and Pluto conjunction. Pluto is the planet of transformation, it happens to be my ruling planet in the, in the sign of Scorpio. And Saturn is like the taskmaster, responsible, organized. Let's get it done. I also have uh, Saturn in my star sign of Scorpio as well, which, which kind of accounts for my kind of work ethic. I'm, I'm very hardworking, almost to, have, um, to my detriment. But I've had to become aware of that in the past. And I want you to become aware of what you're doing that is going against your true nature. So be aware of that. Let's stay at 30,000 feet and then we'll come down in a little while and I'll talk to you about what you can do with this. But um, I cannot um, overstate the importance of this. I don't know what's gonna happen. No one knows what's gonna happen. Astrology isn't to predict the future. It's to tell you what's going on in the planetary cosmos and how you can relate to that here down here on Earth in this 3D reality. Human consciousness is at a turning point, if you like. We, have been, we are always evolving. That's what we're here to do. We're here to evolve human consciousness. And we have been evolving at a faster rate in the last couple of years. And some things have come to light. We've had some, you know, some shenanigans going on with some of our trusted institutions. We've had, um, we've had uh, skullduggery. We've had um, deceit. You know, we've had all of that going on and people are no longer trusting institutions. I got to tell you, not, I don't want to be political here, but the last result of the UK general election was a big shock because um, when um, in the last election, the Conservative Party or the Republican Party equivalent in the USA um, won a majority landslide victory um, and the, the result for the Labour Party, which is the Democratic, the Democratic Party in the US, was the worst since 1935. Some, there are a whole swathe of people who had never voted Conservative before, ever. Had always been Labour voters, but they voted for the Conservative Party because they want to get Brexit finished and done with. We have been faffing around with Brexit, getting out of the European Union for the last three years on false promises, false starts, but, we, but now we have come together as a nation, uh, rightly or wrongly, I don't know whether it's a good idea or not. I personally didn't vote because I was living in France at the time. But rightly or wrongly, something is happening now. Something is moving. And this is going to continue through 2020. And we're going to be moving at that level of consciousness that is going to demand more of us, more of awareness, so that we can... Um, we can show up differently for ourselves and for our guests and for the people around us and our families and our friends because the paradigm is shifting. We're moving out of this, you know, I've got to get my bit, I've got to get my share into how can I, how can I help others to get their share as well? How can I help more people and lift them up with me rather than trying to take from, from somebody or take from somebody else? in order to, you know, so that they lose and you win. That kind of mentality is actually, it's fading away and it will not serve us in this new paradigm. So out with the old, in with the new, declutter, 
old systems are breaking down. Clear up, clean out, leave your baggage behind as much as you can. Raise your awareness, raise your level of consciousness. Be more kind, especially to yourself. As we enter this new collaborative paradigm where everybody, everybody is taken care of. And just before I move on from the 30,000 foot view, if you like, um, again, I'm not, I'm, this is nothing to do with politics, but um, I, I encourage you to take a look at what Marianne Williamson is doing in the USA. Um, I don't know if she's going to make it to the Democratic nomination. I don't know. But she's having a different conversation, a totally different conversation to the normal political conversations that we've all seen it all over the world, right? The normal, you know, he's bad, I'm good. Um, he, he needs to lose so I can win. That kind of stuff, you know, shaming people and, 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 and bringing out, you know, supposed scandals and setting people up and all of that stuff. It's, we need to rise above that. And she is attempting to rise above that. And she has uh, initiated a brand new conversation, uh, hopefully so that she can get the Democratic nomination. I don't know whether she'll succeed. I don't know whether we're ready for that. I don't know. But, you know, people are coming out like that. She, 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 is, um, she is formidable. She's a, a, a spiritual leader. I've got several of her books that she's written as a spiritual leader. And now she's entered politics because she wants to change it. So I strongly recommend that you take a look at what she's doing. Whatever your political view, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that she's right or wrong. It's just that there's a new conversation coming through. And people will rise to that. Just like there were new conversations when Martin Luther King stood up for civil rights in the late 60s, in the 60s. Just like uh, the, suff the women's suffragettes stood up for themselves, you know, at the turn of the, of the 20th century. You know, we've had this, we have this all through history and, and it's happening again and we're not gonna escape it, you know? This is our time and whatever, whatever needs to be, whatever needs to be um, cleared out, will be cleared out and so we have the opportunity to rise our our level of consciousness consciousness to bring in this new paradigm to help you know to be part of that i i certainly am I'm, uh, committed to being part of that paradigm shift so that we can all rise together so that's the that's the thirty thousand foot view okay just one more thing we're also entering on the Chinese New Year on the 25th of January, we're also entering the year of the metal rat. We've been in an earth-based um, years. Last year was the earth pig, before that was the earth horse, I think. And I think before that was the earth rabbit. I may, I may have got that the wrong way around. But we're now in the metal area. There are, if you're familiar with the elements, um, air, water, metal, earth, and fire, we've been in earth-based. Um, years and now we're moving into the metal years and there'll be four of them the first one is the metal rat and that starts on the 25th of january the rat is efficient it's organized and it's kind the metal rat is the metal rat uh, specifically is precise in its actions waste less less is more efficiency organized and kind so I think my takeaway from that is stop slogging yourself to death, right? Be more efficient, work smarter, not harder. Take more time off, be kind to yourself. You don't need to slog away. I've seen so many posts on Facebook of particularly women, this is particularly prevalent with women, who feel that they have to work hard to prove themselves, to prove their worth. This will not be necessary in 2020. In fact, it's never been necessary. But as we come to a new awareness around it, we'll be able to, to, to calm our nervous systems so that we can be more creative. Because when you're in work mode, when you're in the work, 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 go, go, go mode, you know, I've cleaned six bedrooms today, I've cleaned six toilets today, I've made 10 beds, you know, I've put three loads of laundry on, I'm now gonna make the breakfast, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and I'm gonna get going again. There's no room for creativity because all of that adrenaline, adrenaline that drives your system will block your creativity and we need your creativity in 2020. All right, so let's bring it uh, down to the industry level now. Let's talk about some trends that are happening in the industry from my research and what I've, uh, what I've uh, been party to. There's some uh, trends in 
marketing and there's also some trends in the way that the industry is going. So let me give you the trends in marketing. The, the, your primary job for marketing is to raise awareness of your property so that more people know about you, so that more people will want to hear from you, so that more people will book with you. Really, that's how it works. Now, some people will become aware of you and immediately book, but not everybody will. So it's your job to make sure that everybody is taken care of in that process of becoming aware of you and then booking a room with you as well. So content marketing is still key. Content, content is still the currency of the internet content. Whether you produce that in, in the form of written posts or you produce that in the form of video uh, or if you just like talking like, like I'm doing here, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're doing to make people aware of you, content is the, is the way to do it. Um, a turn to the human side of marketing, I got this from Forbes. Um, a turn to the human side of marketing, I'll come to that in a second. But the, the growth of micro influences is really important for us in this industry. Too many people are still like hiding out on social media. Social is social, you have to be social. You have to bring yourself to the party. So don't hide, tell us who you are, tell us about you, talk about you, show your face, tell us some stories, inspire us with reasons to come to your area and become that micro influencer. You don't have to be a Kardashian, but you have to be some kind of, you have to be somebody for your guests. And this is even more important in 2020 as, you know, the old, you know, top down governmental institutions fall away and they will. I don't know what to what extent, but they will change and shift. And as those shifts, we'll need each other more and more. We'll need each other more and more. And so you so you have an opportunity to rise yourself up and become that micro influencer in a good way, you know, not manipulative but in a good way that helps people and it helps you so that everybody gains in this collaborative new paradigm that's coming through. So again, your primary focus is growing awareness of yourself and your property and what you offer, closely followed by increasing the number of people who may book with you and then converting them into bookings. That's really the simplicity of it. Now, um, so the industry trends that I've been um, uh, researching are the lower end of the industry is becoming saturated because of all of the Airbnb competition, all of the um, the price wars and the price discounting. Because you know when you're in the mass market, there's always a price thing. You know people like supermarkets, big supermarket chains, they're constantly monitoring the prices of their competitors, and if you're doing that then good luck with that because my prediction is that's just not going to work anymore because what's happening is that the, the online travel agents are, they're, they're basically in the, having their own war and, they, and they'll end up eating each other. And as they drive you, drive your prices down, they're suggesting that you lower your prices all the time. They're suggesting that you give discounts. I recommend you do none of that, that you completely look the other way and that you 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 plow your own furrow so that you are exclusive or premium or at least moving that way you don't have to you know you don't have to spend any more money on your property this is all an unconscious thing right level up your consciousness level up your awareness of what you offer stand in your value and talk about it in your content marketing so that we so more people can become aware of you because I can tell you, it's much less crowded at the upper end, at the exclusive end, than it is down in the, in, the, in the bottom end of the budget market where everybody's looking for a deal, everybody's beating you down on price. You know, the online travel agents are trying to get you to discount your prices, get out of that, you know? Okay, so you're still listed with them, that's fine. But move yourself to a premium or higher end where it's less crowded and the air is clearer. Secondly, the public don't care about the book direct campaign. They just want to book, right? Your job is to educate, entertain, and engage your, the people who would want to stay with you so that they naturally move towards booking direct 
not because not because somebody's telling them to, but because it's a natural progression for them to want to book direct with you because they've got to know you. I still see lots and lots of posts on Facebook. I'm always looking at what people are doing in the industry uh, and, and what, you know, what owners are doing as well. And I see lots and lots of Facebook posts where people are just talking at people. It's not a social engagement. And it's like, if you like, it's like going into a networking event with your business card and just kind of throwing it around and say, here, here, I'm here, here, I'm here. And not actually listening to anybody, not actually talking to anybody. That's not very social. It's not very friendly. There, there is, there's too much of that going on. And that brings me to my, my, uh, my prediction is that there's, I, I kind of invented this world this word called intimate marketing intimate marketing where you actually talk to people and you have conversations either in your messenger or through some kind of uh, function on your website or um, even via email as well email marketing is still good it's not dead i know people have been saying it's been dead for 20 years it's still really really good email marketing if you're not doing it then make 2020 the year that you start to do email marketing in a professional way. So uh, let me just check my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything out here. Yeah, the online travel agents are getting more and more rapacious and they'll end up eating each other. So make sure you're not caught in the crossfire and you become a casualty because you're relying too much on them for your bookings. I strongly encourage you to get away from that as quickly as you can. Not, you know, not, that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that they, they have a certain way of working. But it's not going to be for your benefit in the long run. Yes, in the short term, if you're just starting out, then yeah, great. But in the long run, they're not going to be for your benefit. I can tell you that. So trends that you can take advantage to position yourself for success and peace of mind in 2020. Become that celebrity for your guests. Become somebody for your guests ramp up your content marketing especially if you can right if, on video now video you know not 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 everybody likes doing video but there's a difference between being afraid of it and it being not your natural way of communicating right you always want to be playing to your strengths if being on video is not your natural way to communicate then don't do it if but there has to be a natural way to communicate, right? So if it's not video, if it's not talking, then it's got to be writing. You'll probably find that you're quite good at writing. Many of my clients have found their inner author from working with us. When they get going, it's so much fun to create content when they know how to do it because they knew all along, really. They've just forgotten. And you can do that too. But if you prefer to talk like this, then get yourself on video and do some videos. Showcase your area don't try to sell rooms sell the experience of your area that you can provide all the best the best guests the best type of booking comes from people that you've had a conversation with right whether it's like on social media or whether it's through email but make sure that you're having the conversation all the way through the process from booking to arrival um, usually via email marketing so make sure you've got that in place um, I've put down intimate marketing and I want to explain a little bit more about that. Intimate marketing is just this thing that I've just coined. Um, and it's really conversational marketing. You know, how many conversations are you having on social media every day? How many conversations? Because that will be directly linked or that will directly co correlate with the, the number of direct bookings that you're getting. Because people are on social media, whether you, whether you like social media or you don't like it. You know, whether you're an introvert or whether you're ext extrovert, you can find your way to do it. You must find your way to do it. Don't let anybody tell you what you should be doing on social media. Just do what feels natural to you and get over your fears as we rise uh, in, a, in our level of awareness. So um, in a moment, we're going to set some intentions and um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to work with us if you feel that this is the right moment for you. Um, but first, um, I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to do some little calculations so that you can see what's possible for you in, in 2020. So let me go back here. 
Um, let me get this up here. Right, so if you have any questions, then let me know uh, either in the Facebook group, if you're watching this in the Facebook group, let me know if you have questions. Um, and if you have questions and you're on the Zoom, then just put them in the chat box and I will come to them as soon as I see them. So I'm just checking the questions box in Zoom right now. Marie, do we have anything in the Facebook group from anybody? Hello, Chizomo from Malawi. Hello, E. Hello, Mary. Hello, oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, Marie, thank you. Okay, Pontheola, how do you break away from the OTAs? That is a really good question. Okay, let me just answer that. Okay, I'm just gonna answer that right now for you because the reason that you're with the OTAs or that you're relying on the OTAs is because you have not put any foundations in place. A lot of people come to me and they say, I just need more bookings. Just show me how to get more bookings, more direct bookings usually. And I'd love to be able to show you how to get more bookings. And in fact, I can, but it's not an overnight fix. You have to put some foundations in place first. You have to deal with your, your, um, your, your promise, you know, your promise. Who do you welcome and why? How do you, what experience do you offer them? What are you saying about that? What are you, what, it, what is the thing that you're offering that they can't get anywhere else? And how are you communicating that online? You've got to start with that first. You've got to get set up with your online promise online first. And then you translate that online promise to the structure at your property on the ground, right? Those are two key foundational pieces. People miss that entirely. They just want to go, I want some bookings. I want some bookings. Of course you want bookings, right? But you, you'll, and you'll get bookings, but not until you've put the foundations in place first. It's like building a house on sand. It will just fall over. And so gradually over time, you get more confidence in what you offer. You get more confidence in yourself because you're delivering on your online promise every single time. So you get better reviews and the whole thing builds snowballs, snowballs into a, into a, a business that you love and that you can count on. It's not an overnight fix. I wish it was, but anything worth doing, anything that's worth having is never got quickly, right? Never. We always have to work at it. We have to go through the process and we have to commit to the process and put those foundational pieces in first so that you can stop relying on the OTAs and start relying on yourself. Okay, so does that answer your question, Pompeola? Just let me know. Okay, so somewhat. Okay, ask me another, ask me another. What haven't I addressed? What wasn't clear? Let me know so that I can help you. If you are, and, and this is for everybody, not just for you, Pontiola, if you are heavily reliant on the online travel agents, that tells me that you have not taken the time to go through the process of establishing your new unique value and then how to talk about it and communicating online. It tells me that. That is where you need to start in order to get off the OTAs. Another reason that you, uh, another thing that it tells me if you're over reliant on the OTAs, it tells me that you don't have any systems in place either to attract guests to yourself, to build relationships with them and to have them coming back. You're kind of leaving it to chance. That tells me that as well. Okay, yes, I, okay, that's great, Pompeo, that she's developed the, the guest list and marketing via social media. Yeah, it's not a quick fix, right? You're probably missing some key pieces in the way that you communicate your unique value. We need to start with that. You need to start with your promise, your statement, uh, who do you welcome and why, and as soon as we meet you online, we need to know that. You can't just be a generalist anymore. The generalists are in the bottom of the, in the budget department where everyone, where everyone is, where they're clamoring for people. You know, people have so much choice now when they, when they travel. They've got so much choice with the Airbnb thing, the short-term accommodation, the serviced accommodation. You know, it's time for us as B&B owners and innkeepers, it's time to up level so that we're not lumped in with all of that. Let them do their thing. But yeah, that's not for you. That's not what you do. It's not. 
And you have to find a way to communicate that unique value so that you're not lumped together with them. And people are very clear about that. And as I said just now, it's our job to educate, entertain, and engage people so that they naturally want to come and book with us because of what we offer, which is unique from everyone else. Okay, yes, hello, uh, yes. Okay. Yes, okay, great, thanks, Marie. Ponciola, yes, okay. I would, I would be working, I would be working on that, Ponciola. All right, so uh, we're halfway through. So I'm going to just give you some, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at some practical tools now that you can use um, to get yourself set up for 2020 so that you can ride these waves and these trends as well. And the first place to start is to know where you're going. So I'm going to uh, bring up on the screen a little calculator tool and you can interact with me if you want to, or I'm going to do some scenarios here for you so that you can get a, an idea, get a, um, you, you can get an idea of what, what kind of money you could be making. And you might not want to make more money, right? You might be sitting there thinking, well, actually, I'm worn out this year because we had a bumpy year, but I'm worn out, right? If that's your problem, then that tells me that you have not got your structure set up properly at your property. That's where you need to be paying attention. So, uh, because there's no need for you to work so hard. People, if you're still doing your own cleaning and your laundry, that's the place to start. Oh, that's nice, Kathleen. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll share my story again in a second. I've got it on my notes to do. So let's go to the calculator, right? So I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of help here. Just a second. I'll share my screen with you. And then you'll be, uh, and I'll show you how this works. So let's just see how much you could be making in terms of cash, right? In terms of money. So uh, let me know in the chat if you can see my screen. Great, great. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks. Right. So if you haven't seen this before, this is, uh, this is the place to start. And I'm going to give you this calculator at the end of the call, if you want it, so that you can play around with it, because it, it's all formulated. There's only two things you need to touch. And that's this cell here. In fact, I will make this cell yellow and this cell here. This is just two cells that you need to touch. Um, I'm getting some questions. So let me just let me just see what's going on here. OK, right. OK, there's only two cells that you need to touch here. The number of you, rooms you have. So let's per se we have five. Let's put five in there and your average room rate per night. So take all of your rooms. Uh, whatever you charge per night, add them all up and divide it by five. So just to keep it simple, I'm just going to put 100 in there. doesn't matter about the currency. Don't get hung up on the currency. I'm just, this is just a demonstration. This is where you need to start. So at 25% occupancy, you'll be making 45,625 whatever, dollars, pounds, sterling, whatever, euros. doesn't matter what the currency is. If you were if you were at 35% occup occupancy, you'd be making 63. This is just rooms, right? Nothing else, just rooms. And if you were at 50% occupancy with five rooms at 100 a night, you'd be making 91,250. Just rooms. Now, over here on the right here are three upsells. Uh, I strongly encourage you to start charging for some of the things you're giving away for free. Because here's the thing. Not everything, right? Not everything, but some of the things you're giving away for free are hugely valuable to your guests in terms of convenience. If, you, if, you, uh, um, if, if you're giving away everything, they're not respecting you and they're not valuing you. So people like to buy, right? We like to buy. We don't like to be sold to, but we like to buy. So if you give them opportunities to buy more stuff from you, more products and services that you've created, especially with them in mind, they will buy. A percentage of them will buy. And you'll be amazed at what they'll pay for. And often it's just about convenience. So I've just put in here a very conservative estimate of 20% of your people, 20% at the 25% occupancy uh, rate, will buy your extra, your first upsell at 50, you'll gain an extra 4,563. If you've got a second upsell at 25, whether it's pounds, dollars, or, or euros, or whatever currency you're in, it doesn't matter. Then you'll gain an extra 2,281. And then if you've got a third upsell, 
and 20% of them take that option, you get an extra 913. Not a lot in it individually, but added up, you can see that you've added another 8,000, on, almost 8,000 onto your turnover for pretty much doing nothing at all, okay? So your worst case scenario is 25% and somewhere in between. You prob this probably won't be exactly where you are this year, but you, you, know, you can see you can, you can double your money here, double, more than double your money if you just get your occupancy rate up 25% and add some upsells. It's amazing how this can be, how this can work for you. I've seen it so many times. This is what I did in my own B&B and this is what I teach my clients to do to upsell with confidence and pride in what you offer so that your guests feel comfortable and love to buy it because it will enhance their stay. So let's do another one, okay? Let me know if that, if that makes sense, first of all. Does that make sense, what I've done here? Just, just give me a yes, if that makes sense. I'm gonna do another one in a second. Okay, where's my chat? Where's my chat? Chat. Okay, great. Okay, so let's say you've got 10 rooms. Okay, let's put 10 in there. And let's say you charge 200 a night, right? Okay, you can see that you've got 182,500 at 25%. You've got uh, 255,500 at 35%. You've got 365,000 at 50%. Then with your upsells over here, you've got the possibility to make 380,513, whatever currency you're in. Pretty, pretty nice, huh? So if you, I'll give this to you after the call and you can play with it because I want you to think about how much you could possibly make. Now the danger is that you might look at this and think, I just don't want that much money because it sounds like I'm gonna have to work really hard and you don't want to be working any harder than you do already. The trick is to get other people to work for you. Now, let's be clear, you don't get to keep all of that money, right? You don't get to keep it. As a general rule, you'll get to keep half of it as a contribution to your fixed costs. So whatever you're making over here in the best case scenario, whether it was the 99,000 or it's the 380,000, or let's do another one, let's do seven rooms at 150. Okay, whatever that figure is over there, you're going to generally, generally, you're going to keep half once you've paid, paid your taxes, once you've paid your cleaner, once you've paid for the laundry, the breakfast supplies, uh, all of the things that your commissions, all of the things that you have to pay for when somebody stays at your property. Not your things that you pay for whether somebody stays or not, your fixed costs, all right? So that becomes then a contribution to your fixed costs. And by the way, that 50% includes paying yourself. If you're not paying yourself, then I, I strongly encourage you to reconsider that in 2020. Okay, so this is a really neat little tool to give you an idea of where you can go. We know, am I, am I performing at my peak? Could I make more money? Could I, uh, could I work less by working smarter and still make a, a heck of a lot more money than I did last year? So let me just stop sharing my screen. So once you've got that, what I want you to do now is I want you to think about, um, yeah, absolutely, Marie. I want you to think about, you know, what is, what, what would I like to make? And don't correlate what you'd like to make in, in the financial figure with you working harder, okay? Don't do that because then you limit yourself because, you know, we, we can only work so hard anyway. So I want you to think about what would I really, what would, what would I really like to make in 2020 that would make my life so much different, so much better. And then write that figure down, right? You don't have to share it. You can keep it to yourself, but just write that number down. What is that number that you want to make that would, that would dramatically change your, your, your life? Okay. It may be, if you are established in your business, it may be, that you need to think about adding another revenue stream to your business, a completely different revenue stream. If you hit the ceiling, if you're already at a good occupancy and you're making, you know, you've hit the ceiling, then you may want to add a completely different revenue stream using your business as the engine to unleash your, your creativity on what it is you can create as well as running your B&B. 
that's an exciting thing to do. We've helped lots of clients do that. We helped uh, one client launch a clothing line. Um, we've helped uh, another client start an online shop. Um, and we've helped a couple of clients actually to actually move on from the B&B. And that's another thing that, um, that could be right for you in 2020. As you're clearing out and you're clearing up and you're letting go, you might, you might decide that this is the moment. Actually, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's perfectly valid as well. Perfectly valid. I was speaking to somebody the other day who was a client of mine in 2015, I think. And we were having a chat about her B&B. And, and she was saying, you know, how, how hard it is and how she can't find any guests and she can't get enough guests. And I just asked her the question, has it run its course? And she said, yes, I think it has. And that's fine too. It's your life, you get to choose. You don't have to keep doing this if you've reached the end of the road. So be honest with yourself. The metal rat will, will demand the precision and the efficiency and the, the paradigm shift that is happening in January and all through this year will demand that you be honest about what you're doing. Because if you're not enjoying it anymore, then your guests are gonna feel it for sure. And they're gonna feel it more and more. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the next thing, right? So you've got a number, right? Okay, so what do you need to do to reach that number? What do you think you need to do? Write down what you think you need to do to get that number. So as I'm just gonna run through the areas that you need to put your focus on if you want to reach this number, right? If you are relying uh, heavily on online travel agents, then you don't have a proper strategy in place to make that number. Work on your strategy, work on your, uh, your, your promise. What is it you offer? What is, it, uh, what is the experience that your guests are going to have when they stay with you? And who is this for? Work on that so that you are, you're standing proud in your value and you're sharing that and communicating that powerfully via your online marketing. If you feel like, I don't want to make any more money because I don't want to work any harder, then you need to work on your structure at your property to make sure that you've got your team in place. So you're looking after your team, you're looking after your guests properly, you're looking after yourself and you're looking after your money as well. So that's where you need to put your focus on. If you are finding it difficult to um, get off the online travel agents and you, uh, you don't have any systems in place to attract guests yourself, then focus on your systems. To your system to attract guests, your system to upsell. If, you, if you're not upselling at the moment or you're doing it haphazardly, it's not strategic and you're not making uh, enough money out of it, or you feel bad about asking for money, you don't like to ask for money when you're, when you're offering something, work on your systems, work on your mindset as well, because you're, you're going to have to be confident when you ask for the sale. And if you feel you've hit a ceiling on where you could be right now, you feel like you've, you know, you've done all you can and you're making good money, but you're thinking there's something more, then it may be time to add another revenue stream to your business. So which of those three places do you, which of those four places do you feel that you need to put your focus on in 2020 to raise your game? Where, where do you need to be? Is it, the, is it the strategy? Who do I serve? Who do I welcome and why? And what is the experience offer? Is it the structure? How do I translate that online promise in my marketing to an amazing experience that they can't get anywhere else? And the one that I am proud to deliver and one that I am, um, I am unique in delivery. While, while you're working less and being more efficient, right? This isn't about you working harder. More guests does not mean more work, should not mean more work for you. Is it the systems? Do you have a system in place, a reliable system to attract guests, to upsell to your guests and to have those guests come, coming back? If you don't have that engine in place, is that going to be your focus for 2020? Where is that going to be? You can share it with me in the chat box if you want to, or on the Facebook page. Where is your focus for 2020? If there was one thing that you were going to do in 2020, what would be your intention? Okay. Fantastic. 
Okay, systems. Yes, Sherry. Yes. Confiant, the strategy of taxing weddings. And, and yes, absolutely. And Anouk, hello. How do you know what service you can ask extra money? If you position your B&B as premium, guests expect good service and luxury. For example, can you ask money for a shuttle service from your B&B to a golf course? There's also a big hotel right next to the golf course where guests can stay. Take no notice of the hotel next to the golf course, right? Some people will go and stay at that hotel and some people will come and choose you. They're not the same people, right? Don't get hung up on what you perceive as the competition because actually when you know what you're doing and you know what you stand for, there is no competition because there's nobody like you. And yes, you can charge for extra services. They'd be happy to pay. Don't forget when you up level and you, and you orientate yourself towards the premium end of the market and out of the budget discount, you know, price driven market, don't forget people, those people want to pay for the luxury. They want to pay for the extra services because it feels like they're, they're giving something to themselves. So don't deny them that opportunity. They're going to spend the money with somebody. They might as well spend it with you. Okay, Chizomo, great. Marketing, yes. What type of marketing, uh, Nancy? What type of marketing? What are you going to do? In, uh, marketing is it's just a, it's a buzzword, it's a catch-all. What are you going to do? Thanks, Marie, for posting these. Okay, so uh, where are we? How are we doing for time? Okay, so the, uh, a couple, just two more things, and then we'll we'll wrap up. Okay, um, and. One of the things that I, I have done for myself and I encourage my clients to do uh, over the years is, um, yes, absolutely, Mary. Yes, Marie. Um, is to choose a word, right? There's, um, I think it's a guy called somebody Gordon. I think it's Jim Gordon. I'm not absolutely sure, sure about that. You can Google and find out. But there's this thing called the one word, right? There's the one word that will be like your guiding light, your guiding principle um, that will bring you clarity whenever you want, whenever you, you need to make a decision going forward through the year. Um, I, I encourage you to choose a word. It can be anything you want. It's got to feel right to you. But some of the words that I've used in the past have been impact. Um, they've been courage. Um, what else have I used in the past? Confidence. Um, choose words that, that kind of resonate with you. Just choose one word that's going to be your guiding principle in 2020. It could be efficiency. And that will stop you from overworking. When you think of your word, it can be, it, it can be the thing that stops you. And when, you, when you've decided on your word, Print it out and put it up in your office somewhere so that it, it is con you're constantly reminding yourself of what it is that you committed to do uh, in the next 12 months. My word for 2020 is bold. So I will be doing things that are bolder than maybe I would have done before because that is how I want to make a bigger impact for you guys to help you more, to help you up level, to help you have the life and business that you want. Because as Jim Rohn says, the way that you the way that you get what you want is when you help more people to get what they want. And that's true for any business, whether you're running a BNB &B or you do what I do, which is help owners. So have a word that you can, um, John Gordon, thanks very much, Nancy. Thank you. Um, thanks for reminding me. So that word, I love that concept. I've used it uh, a lot over the years. Um, but make it, make it into your guiding light, if you like, so that whenever you feel down or you feel demoralized or something hasn't gone as the way you wanted it to, something hasn't gone as planned, you've got something to come home to, you've got something to come back to, and to remind yourself that you have the power, you have the power to shift your mindset and to shift your, your trajectory. You do have that power. You just have to bring yourself back to it and the, and the one word thing is a really good way to do it there are lots of other ways you can do it um, there's 
many things you can you know just sit and meditate you can sit and breathe but i find personally that the one word is a really good way to to give me that clarity and focus for where i want to go uh, over the next 12 months okay so just one thing I, i'm going to leave you with this and, I'm, and if you feel like you you want to work with me okay yeah if you feel like now is the time that you'd like to work with me and Marie, maybe you've been watching us and you've been watching some of our testimonials and you've been wondering, then this is the beginning of the beginning, right? This is the beginning of the new paradigm. So if you feel like now is the time that you're going to get your act together, you're going to leave the baggage behind, you're going to leave your skepticism behind and maybe your cynicism behind and you're going to commit to the process of getting what you want this year with your business, or even without it in some cases, then um, here's where you need to go. Let me just give you this link to book a call with me. I'm gonna leave you with something in a second. Okay, that's where you can book a private call with me. And on the call, we will talk about what you want where you want to go in 2020 and if i feel that, that we can help you myself and marie and our team here at bed and breakfast coach if we feel that we can if i feel that we can help you then i will tell you how that works this is not a sales call this is a clarity call so that we can establish what you want and what you need to get there so if you feel like now's the time then go ahead and book a call with me and i'll be happy to talk to you so just the last thing right and I think this is really important. And I'm sharing this story with you because um, I, I think it's a, a really great example of how you can, you, can, you can do anything. You can do anything. So 10 years ago, um, at, at the end of the previous decade, this is New Year's Day 2010, my family and I were living in a caravan. We had lost all of our, we had lost our business in the crash of 2008. We had no money left. We'd lost all of our money in, in the subsequent time in, in 2009. We'd have no money left. We'd raided our pension fund. We'd, we'd gone through all of our savings. We'd gone through all of the money that my husband got when he got laid off from his job. We were totally on, the, on, on our knees at that point. We just... We'd been living in that caravan for four months. We'd had a fire in the house that we were renting in the UK at this time. And the caravan was the only thing that we could find. So in January, on, in January 2010, we decided that we would leave the UK where, we, where all of this had happened. So many things, so many challenges have happened, both emotionally, in our family and financially, that we felt we'd had enough of the UK we'd only been there four years, that we would move back to our home in France and reopen my B&B that I started in 2000. And that decade was a challenging decade, but also a very, very, what's the word? Fulfilling decade for me, if you like. I completely changed my identity. I completely changed who I was as a person. I. I was a housewife before that. I was raising our two girls. And when I got back to France, to our home in France that we left four years earlier, I knew that I had to shift my identity into somebody who could make the money that I needed to make to keep my family together and to put food on the table and to keep my home because the bailiffs were threatening to take it away. And that identity shift has been pivotal. It's been paramount. It's been key in getting me to where I am now, to be able to talk to you like this on video, to be able to pick up my phone and do a live stream, to be able to write things, to be able to question people, to be able to ask questions, to be able to help clients get results. Because you can't take anybody anywhere that you haven't been yourself. And so I am constantly developing myself so that I can take my clients further than they ever thought possible before because I did that for myself first. Changing, shifting your identity has to be your priority in 2020. As, we, as the paradigm shifts, the identity that you've had before 
will maybe, maybe not serve you going forward. I don't know for sure. I'm not a fortune teller. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> but you, you're, the way that we show up, the way that we, the way that we present ourselves, you know, both at your guest house and online is going to be pivotal. It's going to be key for you in 2020. And just as it was pivotal for me back in 2010, I needed to learn so many new skills. I needed to learn so many new strategies that I'd never heard of before, that no, not in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd be doing when I was a housewife raising our girls. You have to have that uh, awareness about yourself that you are where you are because of what you know and what you already believe about yourself. If you want to go to another place, if you want to make that money, that, that the figure that you put down when we did the calculator, if you want to work less, then you're gonna to have to think about yourself differently. You're going to have to change the way you see yourself. And that's what we help you to do as well as all the strategies and as well as all the tactics. It's not an overnight thing. It took me, it, it took me really, I mean, I'm still on the journey. I can't say that I'm even there, but within 12 months, I'd made just over 50,000 in my bed and breakfast business. Before that, I had only ever made less than 10,000 a year as a housewife, but as a professional business owner, as a professional host, and they are two different skill sets, I was able to take my business to that next level. And yes, it was very challenging, very challenging. And that's why we, myself and Marie, are dedicated and committed to holding your hand through the process so that you can smoothly adapt into that person and become that person that you need to be in order to get the result that you just said that you wanted. Does that make sense? Let me know if you have any questions on that and then we'll wrap up. Just want to check um, that I've done everything. Okay, any, any questions, any comments on what I've shared? So just to sum up, while I'm waiting for the internet to do its thing, and tell me what you say. Just to sum up, the universe, the cosmos, the astrology, God, whatever you want to call it, the higher consciousness, is demanding that we up level this year. It's going to throw some spanners in the works. It's gonna throw some curveballs because it wants us to wake up to our past behaviors, to the destruction that we've caused on a global level on the planet, but also to the, to the um, behaviors and the patterns that we run internally within our own within our own lives, within our relationships. It's, gonna, it's asking us to up level. It's asking us to drop it, to leave the baggage behind and to rise up as a people, as a species, so that we don't tolerate what we've been tolerating so far. The industry is demanding that you go premium because down in the bucket, in the, in the lower end of the market where the discounting is all going on, that's not going to serve you. You're better than that. You're so much better than that. Make a commitment to up level in the way that you present yourself both online and offline, the way you communicate both online and offline, the way you handle yourself both online and offline. The universe is demanding that of us as well. Take advantage of this, take advantage and up level yourself for 2020 and you will, you will, you will be able to change your life, I promise you in the same way that I have, in the same way that Marie has. Marie has just had her best year ever in 30 years with two and a half thousand Airbnbs in her area. Most of the B&Bs in her area have, have given up and closed down. But she's going from strength to strength with it precisely what we teach here. So I'm gonna leave you with that. Get your goals. I'll send you the, uh, I'll drop the link to the calculator in the Facebook group in a minute and everybody who's on the uh, live stream as well, uh, everybody who's on the Zoom call, you'll get the calculator as well. You'll be able to play with it. Um, and if you have any questions, message me, send me a message. Get closer to your guests, make them your own and give them an amazing experience and you won't go far wrong. 
All right, you're welcome, Ponkiola. You're so welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marie, for handling the Facebook group. You're welcome, Sherry. Um, thanks for being with me on the Zoom or in the Facebook group, and I will talk to you soon. You're welcome, Ofra. Thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thanks, Marie. See you soon. Bye for now.